everyone and welcome back to another day of the MyZone online school. My name is Maricel Stofberg and today we have so many great lessons waiting for you. But first, please remember to sanitize your hands. And also remember that our theme for this week is staying at home and staying safe. So now let's jump right into it with our pre-primary and grade one learners for week five, lesson two. Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. Welcome to my Zone Online School. My name is Lentina Huacus and I'm joined by my friend. This week's theme is shapes. But before we start with our lesson, let's sanitize our hands. Very important to do so, so that we can kill all our germs. Make sure your hands are nice and dry. Today's lesson will be circles and squares. Turn to page nine. Okay, let's look at page nine. Here we have to complete the pattern. And you can see this is circle, a big circle, which is round. And next to it, we can see a small circle also round. The next one you're going to help me with. Oh yes, you are right. It is the big circle. And after the big one, what will we get next? Because if we are doing patterns, yes, the small one. Wonderful. Now we're going to ask our friend to come and help us on the blackboard to draw the big circle and the small one next to each other. See how big this one is? Well done. I like that big round circle. Now the small one. Wonderful. Okay, now can you help me? Big. Can you say big? Wonderful. Now you can go sit down. Let's go back to page nine again. Now you can look at the square at the bottom. Yes, well done. There we have got a square. A square has got four sides and four corners. But we will do a pattern here as well. And it's all about big and small. So, big, yes, you are right, you already know the pattern. Big, small, big, small. You are learning very quickly. Now our friend is going to help us again 
to come and write the squares, the big square and the small square on the blackboard. Thank you so much for coming. Big square, well done. Wonderful, she's doing it so carefully. I like that. Now the small square. And she's going to help us to read the pattern starting on the side. Well done. Thank you so much. I hope you will complete the rest of the exercise at home all by yourself. Let's turn to page 10. There we go. We have got a square again on this page. And on this page, we're going to again get use our pencils to trace over the dotted lines. Yes, you are right. That is a present which is wrapped when you are done with your tracing. This is very important to trace and hold your pencil correctly because it's helping us with the future writing if we are doing some writing. Well done. Now can we go to the big square next to the present? Then we take the pencil and from the top corner we trace our square until we are done. Well done. And don't forget to draw your own square. I would love to see that on this page in the corner where the little pencil is and color it in with the color of your choice. Well done. Can we turn to page 11? Yeah, we are going to talk about a circle again. And a circle is round. And it looks like a ball. You are correct. I can hear somebody saying, that's a ball, you are right. If you are finished with the round shape, you will get a beautiful ball. It depends what colors you're going to use to color in your ball. Yes, and the second one, yes, you are right. It looks round like the sun. You can use color yellow if you want. That is good. Now let's look at the next one. Yes, we can trace all of them and don't forget to draw the circle on the empty space there. Hope you will enjoy this lesson. Turn to page 12. We're going to look at the oval shape. Yes, you are correct. All the shapes on the most of them, let's say, looks like the oval shape. Yes, but you're going to help teacher to trace over those beautiful fishes and you color them in very neat inside the lines. Just sit up straight. It helps when you do your writing. Well done. And now before we complete that exercise, we're going to ask our friend to come and help us to, to draw the oval shape. Look where she is starting. Look where she is starting and that's how you go around. Can you do that again? Well done. Do it again. That's the oval shape. And now let's turn to page 12 again. Thank you. Now you sit up straight and then you trace over your fishes. Don't forget to draw your oval shape or your fish in the open space there where the little pencil indicates you have to draw. My 
believe you have enjoyed today's lesson like we did. But before we go, let's sanitize our hands. It is very important to do so, so we can get rid of all the germs on our hands and we will stay healthy. Make sure your hands are nice and dry. And before we go, let's, in, let's invite our friend Zozi to come and say bye with us. Goodbye. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi. And I'm back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Wow, thank you so much, teacher Lentina, for teaching us all about circles and squares. So now, grade two and three learners, I hope you are ready for week five, lesson two. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Teacher Precious and I'm with my friend here. Say hello. The theme for this week is public transport. And before we begin, let us sanitize our hands. Let's rub our hands. And let's spread out. You spread out your hands so that they don't touch the person next to you. And you also do it in front as well. Remember to social distance and to wear your mask every time you go out. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about problem solving, fractions, addition and subtraction and data handling. Let's now turn to page nine where we are going to talk about problem solving or we call them number stories. We have a story of our three classmates. We have Maylin, We have Nini, we have Romeo. Let's read the story. Marilyn, Nini, and Romeo are keeping score of the game they are playing. When a player wins a game, that player gets five points, which means plus five points. Okay. If a player loses a game, we write lose or loses. The player has three points taken away, which means minus three points. If it's a tie, a tie means they have, they have the same score. Maybe it's one, one or two, two. If it's a tie, each player gets two points. 
So it's plus two points. Okay. Let's now check our questions. We are going to do number one and two. What does number one say? Each of them has 20 points to start with, which means Marilyn, 20, Nini, 20, Romeo, 20. How many points do they have in total? It means 20 plus 20 plus 20. Okay, this is how we are going to do number one. Let's now check number two. Maylin wins the first game. Maylin wins the first game. How many points does Maylin have after the first game? We said a win is five points. So Marilyn will get five points. I now want you to do number three, four, five, and six, following what I was doing here. Thank you very much, great twos. Let's now turn to page 10, where we are going to talk about fractions. And our first lesson is on the fraction chart. This is our fraction chart, and on this chart, we are going to learn to name the fractions. We have our first part here, which is not divided. It's written one over one, but we call it one whole. The second one is a half. Then we have a third. You must know how to call these fractions well. We also have a quarter. One over five, we call it a fifth. Then we have a sixth, eighth, and tenth. That's all about the fraction chart. You must also try to draw it grade twos. Okay. And grade threes, you can use it for your revision. You can also draw it. Let's now turn to page 11, where we are going to color the fractions. I have my picture here. It's a pizza. This is a pizza. So we want to color 1 over 4, which means my friend here will eat one part, this one part out of the one, two, three, four. We don't say one over three. We say one out of four. So we want to color one over four. So this is what we do. So like this, it will be one over four. Let me do another example again. 2 over 4. It means we can also color here. Which means 2 pieces of pizza out of 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces. Okay. That's all. I want you to do the rest. You draw a circle. You show me the number of parts. If there are two out of five, it means there must be another one here. Then you color the number on top. Two out of five. Okay. 
Now, let's move on to page 12, where we are going to do a comparison of fractions, grade threes, or we say we are going to compare fractions using greater than, less than, or equal to. Okay. Let me give an example. We have two out of four. Then we have three out of four. Okay. We want to see who is going to eat the bigger piece of pizza. So we color one, two, this one is one, two pieces. And this one, okay. So this one will eat the two pieces and the other one will eat the three pieces. So which one is bigger? Which one will get the bigger piece? So three over four is the biggest. Okay. We now move on to the next example. We have our pizza here. My friend will eat two pieces out of four. Okay. Then this pizza is cut into eight pieces. And I'll eat four pieces. Okay. I can change, I can ch choose Okay, or let me draw it again and do it on the same side. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So there are eight. If I shed, you see? The four pieces will give us the same size as this side. So it's equal. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all about fractions for today. Let's now move on to page three, where we are going to do addition and subtraction of numbers using the number line. Okay, I have my number line here on the board. And we are going to start by subtracting numbers. And I'll do with you the first one and the second one only. So our first sum is 17 minus Two. So we go to 17. Then we count one, two. So 17 minus two equals to 15. Okay. Let me try 12 minus. Six, we come to 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. So our answer, 12 minus six equals to six. So you do the rest on your own. We are now moving on to addition of numbers using our number line. Okay. Our first question is three plus seven. Okay. So we go to three. P 
plus we are adding, we are going forward, okay? One, two, okay. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So three plus seventeen equals to twenty. Okay. Let me do one more. We can take here nine plus nine. Okay. We go to the number nine here. This is number nine. And we add nine numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the answer is 18. Nine plus nine equals to 18. That's all about addition and subtraction of numbers using the number line grade twos and grade threes. Remember to follow for your revision purposes. Thank you very much. Let's now turn to page 14 where we are going to talk about data handling. Okay. I have a picture on the board and we want to start by naming the graph. Today, what we are going to use is called a bar graph. This is a bar graph and we are going to draw the bars from the story which is given here. Let's read the story and while we are reading, we'll be drawing the graph. During the holidays last summer, while traveling across Namibia with a bus, a bus, which means one bus. So this is what we do, grade twos. We come to bus and we draw a line, okay? Then we join. Okay. I came across seven cars at the roadblock uh, between Winduk and Okahanja. How many cars? Seven cars. So we look for cars here. This is cars. How many cars? Seven. We come here. We draw our bar. Okay. When we reach the coastal town uh, at Welvis Bay, I saw three boats anchored at the harbor. How many boats? Three boats. Okay, we go to boats. We draw the bar. Okay. And I, I saw so two planes flying above. How many planes? Two planes, the aeroplanes. Two planes. Okay, after the holiday, I took a train back to Vinduk. 
So it's one train. We come here again and we draw the bar. This is how you draw the bar graph. Then if you want, you can color or you can make lines. You can do the same to all of them. And that's how we do the bar graph. That's all for today's lesson, grade twos. Thank you. Let's now turn uh, to page 15, where we are going to do bridging. And our question is, complete the following sums, make the 10 to add. Bridging means finding the missing number. Okay. I'm going to do an example with you. We have 9 plus 7 equals 2. Then we have a box. And we have two circles. Okay. First, we want to add 9 and Seven. Nine plus seven equals to sixteen. Okay. Now we'll take the six and put it here. Okay. Then to get this number, we are going to subtract seven minus six and we get one, okay. We come to the next stage where we now want to find the 10. Nine plus one equals to 10. Plus, we now bring down this six. Okay, so it will be 10 plus 6 equals to 16. Okay. Now I want you to follow my example and the examples given in our booklet to do the other sums. Thank you so much, grade 2s and grade 3s. Remember to keep on revising. Thank you very much for today's lesson. And uh, before we leave, I would like to remind you to always sanitize. And remember to spread out your hands so that you don't touch the person next to you and you also do it in front as well. Okay, remember to social distance and every time you go out, remember to wear your mask. Okay, before we move on to the next lesson, let's call our friend Zoshi to say bye. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Thank you so much, Teacher Precious, for teaching us all about problem solving. So why have a problem when Teacher Precious teaches you how to solve it? 
So next grade four and five learners, I hope you are ready for week five, lesson five, math. Good morning, Namibia, and welcome to My Zone Online School. I'm Mr. Sean Dierger, and we have our friend Chanel in class with us today. Now, before we can start with today's lesson, we should first sanitize. Chanel, let's take our sanitizer, spray it on our hands, rub it in nicely, rub it in through the fingers, and then we also check for social distance at least 1.5 meters away we have our social distance and now we can start with today's topic and today's topic is addition and subtraction okay class let's turn our books to page 10 i hope we've got our books in front of us chanel let's turn our book to page 10 and we can start with today's lesson addition now let's read before we can start adding numbers together, we first need to learn some terminologies, which tells us when to add numbers. Now, terminologies are words that tells us when we should add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Now, let's have a look at addition terminologies. Add, all together, sum of, plus, put together and these are just a few of the terminologies that tells us when we should do an addition sum now let's start we get different types of addition methods our first type is our pen and paper mode now pen and paper mode are the methods where we write numbers underneath each other and here we should always make sure numbers are correctly under each other before we can add now pen and paper mode is how they taught us to write numbers in grade three grade four now let's see how do we do pen and paper mode here let's go to remember when we add numbers we start from the units this is now after we've written down our numbers neatly underneath each other if the numbers are added together in a specific place value and ends up with a number more than 10 then you write the unit and the 10 is carried over to the next number that carried over number is then added together with the other numbers now let's do a few examples to see what we've just read example 450 plus 23 plus 1560 now we have to add these three numbers together we write 450 we write the 23 and we write 1560 so we wrote it neatly underneath each other units under units tens under tens hundreds under hundreds and thousands under thousands now let's add 3 plus 0 is 3, plus another 0 equals 3. Then 5 plus 2 equals 7, plus 6 equals 13. Now we write down the 3 and we carry the 1 over to the 4. Then we say 4 plus 5 equals 9, plus the 1 that was carried over. And that equals to 10. Then we carry one over to the other one, to the thousands. And that one plus the one that was carried over, that is equal to two. So our answer is 2033. Let's try another example. 55 plus 4726 plus 14,500. We need to write our numbers neatly underneath each other. 55 
plus 4,726 plus 14,500. We make sure our numbers are neatly written underneath each other. Units under units, tens under tens, hundred under hundreds, thousands under thousands, and ten thousands under ten thousands. Now let's add. Five plus six, that is equal to 11, plus zero, it's still equal to 11. We write down the one and we carry the other one over. Then, five plus two equals seven, plus zero equals seven, plus the one that we needed to carry over, and that is equal to eight. Now we add the hundreds. Seven plus five equals 12. We write down the two and we carry the one over. Now we add our thousands. Four plus four equals eight, plus the one that was carried over, and that is equal to nine. And then we add our ten thousands. There's nothing carried over, and we only got one ten thousand and one plus nothing equals one, and our answer is equal to 19,281. So that is pen and paper mode. So the most important thing here is, guys, make sure your numbers are written correctly underneath each other. Now we continue on to page 11 with another way of adding. And here we have commutative property of addition. Now let's see, what is commutative property of addition? In commutative property of addition, the order of the numbers should be changed first, and then only the numbers is added together. Let's read that sentence again. In commutative property of addition, the order of the numbers should be first changed, and then only the numbers can be added together. Now let's go to an example. 360 plus 25. Here we've got only two numbers to add. Now when we apply commutative property, we first need to change the order of the numbers. And how do we change the order of the numbers? Here we write the 25 first, plus the 360. After we have changed the order, now we add it together. But as you see, we did not write it underneath each other, so we will just add it next to each other. Then we say 5 plus 0 equals 5. I write under 5. 2 plus 6 equals 8. I write under 8. And then 3 plus nothing equals 3. And 25 plus 360 equals 385. Guys, let's try another example. 1,250 plus 14,700. Let's read. Remember, first switch the order of the two numbers. So we cannot add it yet. We first need to switch the order. Now let's switch the order. Equals, now we write 14,700 first plus 1,250. And now we add it together. And if I add 14,700 plus 1,250 together, my answer is 15,950. So guys, remember in commutative property, all we do here is we switch the order of the numbers. And then only we can add our numbers together. Now let's go over to the third way of addition. Associative property of addition. Now let's read, what should we do in associative property of addition? In associative property of addition, we add numbers together to form either a multiple of 10, 
hundred or thousand. And then we add it to the rest of the numbers. Let's read again. In associative property of addition, we add numbers together to form either a multiple of 10, 100, or 1,000. And then we add it to the rest of the numbers. Now let's go over to our examples in our book. Example 1. 5 plus 328 plus 15. Now we have to group numbers together. Now what we do here is we try to group numbers together to either give us a number which is a multiple of 10 or 100 or 1000. So here I will group the 5 and the 15 together. And as you see in our example, we put 5 and 15 in brackets plus 328. 5 plus 15, if I add it together, that gives me 20, and 20 is a multiple of 10, and then we say 20 plus 328, and when I add it together, that will give me 348. So now we want to try another example again. Chanel says yes. So let's try another example. 70 plus 2,650 plus 130. So we have to find numbers which we can group together to either give us a multiple of 10, 100, or 1,000. So we go back to our example and we see Let's group 70 with 130. We put 1730 in brackets plus 2650. If I add 70 with 130, that will give me 200. And 200 is a multiple of 100 plus the 2650. And now we add 200 plus 2,650 together, and that will give me 2,850. So that is a associative property of addition. Now let's recap before we continue. Going back to pen and paper mode, remember pen and paper mode is where we write our numbers neatly underneath each other, units under units, tens under tens, Hundreds under hundreds, thousands under thousands, and then we add it together. Then we have commutative property. In commutative property, we first switch the order of the numbers, and then we add it together. And then in associative property, here we group numbers together to find multiples of either 10, 100, or 1,000. And then we find the numbers, we put it in brackets, and then after we found our multiples of 10, 100, or 1,000, and then we add it to the rest of the numbers. So that is the three ways of adding numbers. Okay, class, that was addition, and now we go over to subtraction. Let's turn our books to page 12, and then we go through subtraction. Now, here there's also a few terminologies. Now, remember we said terminologies are words that tells us when we should subtract. Now, let's go through our terminologies. Minus, I think we all know minus. Subtract, I think we all know subtract. Take away, difference, and less than. Now, these are just a few of the terminologies that tells us when to subtract numbers from each other. There are plenty more. So, these are just a few. Now, let's start. In a subtraction sum, there is always a big number known as the muniant, a small number known as the trachyant, and the answer is known as the difference. Please remember these three names. 
the big number, the small number, and what we call the answer of a subtraction sum. Now, when it comes to a subtraction sum, there is one basic rule. Remember the big number is always written at the top and the small number is always written at the bottom. So if we do a subtraction sum, this is just a clue. If we do a subtraction sum and a number is too small to be subtracted from, then that number borrows from the number next to it. Now let's go through a few examples. 2,575 minus 1,344. The big number is written on top, the 2,575. The small number, 1,344, is written at the bottom. And now we minus the two numbers from each other. Then we say 5 minus 4 equals 1. 7 minus 4 equals 3. 5 minus 3 equals 2. And 2 minus 1 equals 1. And that is equal to 1,231. Let's try another example. 5,175 minus 4,355. We write our big number on top. 5,175. We write the small number at the bottom. 4,355. And now we minus it from each other. 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. 7 minus 5 is equal to 2. 1 minus 3. Now here we see we cannot subtract it. So what should we do? Yes, now the 1 goes over to the 5. And the 1 says to the 5, please borrow me because I am too small for the three, to, the 3 to be subtracted. So the 5 will borrow the 1. And now the 5 will change into a 4. Now the 5 borrowed the 1. Now that 1, when it's carried over to the 1, it becomes a 10. And that 10 plus the 1 now becomes 11. And now we say 11 minus 3 is equal to 7. And 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. So going back to that example, remember when a number is too small, it needs to borrow. Now when it borrows one from its partner, and that one is carried over, it is not a one that is carried over, but it is a 10. And then you add that 10 with the small number. And then you take that number and then you minus the next number from it. So that is our subtraction part. Guys, I hope you understood subtraction part. And now we can go over to page 13. On page 13, there's a really nice activity for you guys to do. Now let's go through the activity. Use pen and paper mode to add the following numbers. 257 plus 35 plus 1,957. 1 1.2, 67 plus 5,925 plus 56,714. So here we apply pen and paper mode. Number two, use commutative property of addition. 75 plus 850 and 2.2, .2, 
640 plus 600. Remember, apply commutative property here, guys. Number three, use associative property of addition. Seven plus 875 plus 13, 3.2, 540 plus 1,470 plus 60. Here we apply associative property. And 4.1 is two nice minus sums, 5,794 minus 2,481, and 4.2, 9,065 minus 8,744. So guys, do this activity. I really hope that you will enjoy it. And then on the last page of our book, here you will find our memo. So this brings us to the end of our class. Okay, guys, that brings us to the end of our class. I really hope you also enjoyed our class today. Chanel, did you enjoy our class today? Did you learn a lot today? Yes. Now, before we say goodbye, let's first sanitize again. We spray on our hands. We rub it in nicely, nicely, guys. We check for social distance. Do not forget social distance. Wherever you are, 1.5 meters away, always wear your mask if you travel outside of the house. And guys, we see each other again soon. A blessed week to you. Goodbye. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Thank you so much, teacher Dierhard, for teaching us all about addition. So now let's add to our lessons with grade six and seven, week five, lesson five, math. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Mr. Litwai Dumi and welcome to Mwene. Before we start with our lesson for today, let us remember to sanitize. Make sure you spray your hands, all parts of your hands. We should also remember to keep our social distance by stretching out. Our lesson for today will be on multiples as grade 6 mathematics. Okay, let us uh, now start with our lesson on page 10. Let us go to page 10 on our booklet. So we have to do the multiples whereby you are required to know the definition of multiple there. What is a multiple? I'm reading. A multiple is a result of multiplying a number by another whole number, just like the times table. There's a number line there from 0 to 20, and it shows that it's a multiple of 3. So I start with 0, and you can see the arrow is skipping numbers and it's landing after the third number. It also explains the multiple of 3. So it's 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and it goes on. If you look at the column below, 
the first one says it's multiple of 5, which is 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. We also have multiples of 6, which is 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30, and it goes. The last one is multiples of 7, whereby you have 7, 14, 20, 28, 35, look down this finding multiples consider the number the numbers three and five in short they are trying to find the multiple of three and five a find the first 12 multiples of these numbers b circle all the common multiples those numbers that are found in both sets of numbers c find the lowest common multiple which is lcm that is the abbreviation in most cases we don't use um, a full word but we uh, abbreviate that and we write it as c lcm which is the lowest the, the smallest number that is in both sets of numbers the column Table below, there is A, which is answering the first A, which is written in words. The 12 multiples, which is for 3 and 5. For 3 is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36. For 5 is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60. Those are just the first 12. B, answering the, the B um, question. So B question, you have to find the common multiples. Common means you can find it in both sets, the sets of 3 and the sets of 5. Of five. So the common multiples there of 3 and 5 within the first 12 multiples of these two number is 15 and 30. And, the, and C, answering C, the lowest common multiple, the lowest you are, you are comparing between 15 and 30, which is 15 is the lowest. With that... Allow me to go to the chalkboard and explain this so that you can understand it much, much better. I think you just need to turn a little bit so that you can not be bending your neck. Okay, um, said it's um, three terms, which is um, the lowest common multiple and it's in abbreviation of LCM, whereby we need to find a multiple of two numbers, find which one is common, and pick up which one is the lowest. Let us look at um, other numbers. I will not use three and um, I will not use three and five because they are used. Let us use two and three. The lowest common multiple of um, 2 and 3. So first, we must find the multiple of these numbers, which are 12. So I have 2, I have 4, I have 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Let me end there. And then I also have to look for multiple of uh, 3, which is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and 20, 24, 27. Then Remember, this is to separate the numbers, the list of numbers, because they are not connected to each other. So now, the first one 
is m, meaning the multiple. These are multiples of these two numbers, 23. The second one, we need to look for what is common. See what is common in these um, um, sets. So the common ones, I have two, I don't have two, I have four, I don't have four, I have six, I don't have, I have six here. So six is common. I have eight, I don't have eight, I have 10, I don't have 10, I have 12. So I have 12 also here. So I also have 12 here. I have 14, I don't have 14, I have 16, I don't have 16, I have 18, I see there's also 18 here. So the common, common means it is in both sets. So the common ones are 6, 12, and 10. So in that case, I have my C is also done. Now I'm going to the lowest. The lowest is a pickup. The lowest is a pickup, so if you look at 6, 12, and 18, which number is the smallest there? So lowest is just small, so 6 is the smallest. So we say the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. In short, you can get it that way, but it is very important that you make sure you go through the steps. The moment you skip these steps, you end up not getting the correct answer. Look at this now. The, look at these three terms here. Lowest common multiple, but you can work from here going up. Yes, it is a term L comes first, but try to work from here going this side then you can get it in the right way so i can also do another example maybe if you miss something here we can talk about uh, multiple of um, let's say five and ten five and ten these are the lowest the lowest common multiple of um, five and ten so remember you need to make sure that we start with a multiple so let us start with multiple here of uh, five we have five we have ten we have fifteen we have twenty we have twenty five we have thirty thirty five we have forty and it goes let me just end there and then multiple of ten you have ten you have twenty we have um, 30, 40, 50, 60. It goes, goes. But the recommendation is to do the first 12. You can do, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Go until 12. So we go to the second one, which is common. We must pick what is common here. So what is common, I have 10. So what is common, I have 10. I have um, 20. I have 20. I have 30. I have 40. I have 40. And the list goes. You have 50, you might have 60, and so it goes like that. And then um, C is what is common. So in this list which I have here, the common ones are these ones. And then L for the lowest. So I have to find the lowest. This is ascending order. If we remember how we arrange numbers, you can already see that the smallest is the first one, which is um, 10. So the lowest multiple of common multiple of 5 and 10 is 10 so in short that is how you have to do it 
I believe this is much, much, much easier. Even grade four and five can do this. It's very easy. So with those examples, I believe uh, you understand and you can do much, much better. So we have to do the activity on the book or in our booklet now. So the activity is on page 11. So let us start. I will just um, explain. I will do the explanation on how you can do the activity, but I'm not going to give answers that the answer to this is what and what, but it's just to give you a hint on how you can do this. So activity on page 11 on our booklet, the first one is for you to consider the multiple of 2 and 3. What are they asking? The lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. But we need to go through three steps for you to get the answer. So you have to find A, find the next 12 multiples of these numbers so that is if you look in the table you can see the columns are they empty fill the fill in the multiples of two and three and then you go to d to discover the common multiples of these numbers so you have to find which uh, multiples are common are found in both sets and c find the lowest common multiple of uh, these two numbers which is two and three so you can do that at c if you are smart you might pick up something here so it's kind of a bonus for you um, at number two consider the mat the numbers six and eight what they are asking here is the lowest common multiple of six and eight so you have to do the same at a do the same at b do the same at c but remember you are answering in the table below number three consider the multiple of three six and eight here the only difference is we are using three numbers, not two as we have been doing it. So there is nothing difficult. There is nothing um, to panic uh, about. All you have to do is just to do A, find the next uh, 12 multiples of these three numbers. B, discover all the common multiples of uh, that you can find in both, and I mean in all these three numbers and then find the lowest common multiple of those three numbers with that i um, believe you can do this um, activity and get everything correct um, it's very easy and i hope you are going to get it right i hope you have enjoyed uh, this lesson watch it over and over so that you can understand it better and uh, we have come to the end of this presentation but before we leave let us uh, remember to put on our mask all the time and sanitize make sure all the parts of your hands are sanitized keep the social distance by stretching out and be safe stay safe and thank you What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye!
Wow, thank you very, very much, Teacher Dumi, for teaching us all about multiples. So now, just because we think you're special, we're giving you multiple videos to watch next. So first, we will be checking in with our regions, where Ms. Lina Hangura, who is an HOD in the Kavanku East region, speaks to us a bit about their region and how they're receiving the educational booklets. But also, we will be having an interview with my friend, Elizabeth Joseph, with one of our superstar teachers. So that's it from me. Please stay safe. Remember to sanitize. Stay at home. Bye! So that they cannot forget some other things mm. during the state of emergency because the book contain uh, like preparatory activities especially for grade uh, uh, for pre and grade one so they will remind them the thing that they did mm. from january to february up to march because mm. that's where we stop mm. so now and the other thing is the only worry that we have is the book are not printed in local languages mm. or in indigenous languages. Yeah. So we only have the booklets in English and in African. So if, if needs be, we need books in the language. Because now at junior primary, we taught our kids from, from pre to grade three in their local language, mathematics in the local language. Uh, and we only teach English as a subject. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Now tell me uh, how is this uh, this uh, th method of studying for the learners uh, be, uh, influencing the teacher involved, uh, the parent involvement in, in education? How is it uh, assisting? It is really helping because most of the time parents are busy, they don't really help their kids with mm. other stuff. Yes. But now it's mm. like a must, you have to be there if the kid asks a question. You as a parent or a learner who is in grade 11 or 12 or in upper primary will help out with oh. the kids. Okay. And maybe just your message to the parents. What, do sh what should they do during this period? Uh, we are requesting uh, parents to be there for these kids so that when they come back, at least they have got the knowledge of things that they learned during the state of com uh, emergency. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for time here. All right. Hi everyone, Elizabeth Joseph here again in studio with another guest for you guys. So uh, ma'am, before we get into anything, mm. this is mandatory in our studio, so okay. let's please sanitize. Thank you ma'am. Make sure you guys are also sanitizing at home and mm. keeping on your masks at all time. So ma'am, uh, mm. how are you today? I'm good, or very well. Awesome. So can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Who are you and um, maybe which school are you from? Just a brief background. Okay, my name is Ms. Isabella Carico. I'm from Matia Tisari Primary School, teaching grade seven. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is it exactly that you've been doing here at NMH? Good. We are currently busy setting up lessons for the booklets mm -hmm. for grade six and seven. All right. Mm -hmm. How has that process been like for you? No, uh, it's a bit, it's a bit hectic. We are under pressure of getting the different activities, but we are coping. All right. Mm. Um, if you would like to say something, just a short message to your students, um, can you just help encourage them? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would say to the Namibian chant, uh, use this time effectively. Once you do get the booklets, Use them effectively by answering all questions. Mm. This is a, wa a way of testing yourself. And stay safe. All right. Mm. There you have it from your teacher, Ms. Kariku. And um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, ma'am, for being here with me. Mm. And remember to keep yourself sanitized and safe at all times till you get back to school again. From us here at the studio, it is bye-bye. Thank you.